Welcome and thank you, Nilima Bat, for your um, acceptance of this invitation. Thank you so much uh, for joining us to talk a little bit about uh, Shakti leadership and uh, what it can mean for us, um, not only women, right, but also um, everyone in, in, in the world. So, um, well, um, I would like to start perhaps with uh, a general question um, as we we um, had uh, the women International Women's Days, uh, we are faced with the realities of inequalities of women, in, not only in the workplace but in different spaces in in uh, our our work today. So I would like to start um, with asking you um, how can you uh, maybe explain to us what Shakti leadership is and what, how this perspective allow, allows us to perhaps give um, in, inequality and in these perspectives that um, are provoking these inequalities, um, leave that on the side and advance to uh, perhaps a more holistic way of seeing leadership and how it can make us equal again. So uh, can you explain to us a little bit about uh, what it is checked leadership and how it can help us in this way? So first of all, thank you, uh, Christiane. It's so nice to be on this call. And thanks to Raj Sisodia, my co-author of the book Shakti Leadership, uh, for having made this uh, introduction. Um, yes, we know that uh, there, is an equal, there is a need for equal rights, opportunities, and status across all gender, and particularly for women given that uh, we have been in thousands of years of patriarchy around the world in different cultures where men are given dominance over women and all things masculine are considered more uh, valuable over all things feminine, right? So because of that patriarchal social system in which everything is done, including business, um, this inequality has entered all domains of uh, business as well. And what Shakti leadership says is, in addition to getting equal rights, opportunities and status, there's another very important dimension that also needs to be brought into balance, which is the idea that inside each of us, regardless of gender, we have a masculine side and we have a feminine side. And in order to come into our full power, we need to become a whole person. We need to have access to both these, the, these natures, these principles inside us, these energies, and we need to express both of them in a healthy way for us to be balanced leaders, to be effective leaders, that our power does not flow until we are in balance with our feminine and masculine nature. So, Essentially, that's what Shakti leadership uh, helps people understand, that you have to become present. You've got to step back from your ego and from a place of presence where you have nothing to defend and promote and fear and get caught in the survival instincts. You can then access your true power, which we call your Shakti, your innate strength that flows through you. And in order to flow fully with your power, you need to express your healthy feminine and your healthy masculine side. And um, so very simply, you know, to be healthy masculine, we understand very well, which is focus on the task, get the job done, be effective, apply reason and be, you know, rational and be effective. Whereas you cannot do that until you take your feminine nature along. You've got to be able to take your people along. You've got to be able to empathize with your relationships. You've got to have compassion and kindness, and you've got to know the price your people are paying for the work that needs to be done. So these qualities are the more feminine qualities, and you cannot do task without relationship, right? So Shakti leadership is basically saying, don't lead with half your power. <laughs> don't lead with only the masculine style, which is what everyone has got used to, that it's incomplete if you do not also take your feminine uh, qualities along with your healthy masculine qualities. That in a nutshell is Shakti leadership, but we also talk about 
being congruent as a leader that you should have a purpose and you should know what your true purpose is and are you living your life on purpose do you have a, like you know raj would say in his conscious business work that do you have a higher purpose beyond profit so for a person do you have a higher purpose to your life beyond eating sleeping drinking and you know just just making more money and you know accumulating more wealth do you have a higher purpose to your life and your leadership have you made an impact and made a difference for the better in some way outside of your own personal uh benefit thank you so um if i got it right this helps us or um like overcome this unequal views of uh, gender because yes. everyone has an innate power that can be let's say brought to surface um so th th thanks for explaining to us uh, that but you mentioned also that in the business arena there's been also like this predominance of more uh, masculine energy and masculine traits and um i i believe that is is very complex for women when they enter the 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 the, the work space right because as they seek to advance in their professional careers probably uh some of them have tried uh or have gone with the flow and perhaps embraced um this way of 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 working and leading right so maybe we turn down our feminine energy and try to emulate the masculine so can you tell us how can we perhaps go back to the healthier side that you've mentioned and maybe mm -hmm. Explain to us a little bit of also the unhealthy side so that we know um, perhaps and recognize when we are on this unhealthy side for us to move on to the other. A perfect question. I'd love to show you our polarity map. Uh, you know, how do you work with your polarities? This is the work of uh, Barry Johnson on how to leverage both polarities. And I have applied it to masculine and feminine poles that these are interdependent pairs. Both are needed. To be effective, so the way a polarity map works is you create these four quadrants, and you say what you don't want is to block your shakti, what you do want is to release your power, your full shakti, and for that you've got to be able to leverage both your feminine and your masculine uh, values and behaviors as a leader. So if you say what are the positive feminine qualities. they are empathy and gentleness inclusion nurturing openness creativity variety and flavor in life the ability to trust the ability to be vulnerable to achieve harmony these are very powerful beautiful feminine qualities and right now they are on the ascend because we have unfortunately been doing too much of the masculine and so we have fallen below the line into expressing unhealthy masculine behavior which is aggressive cruel mechanical arrogant insensitive violent power hungry spiritually empty right what we do not realize is that the feminine and the masculine both have a healthy and an unhealthy side so the feminine isn't only all beautiful things you can also be hyper feminine you can be toxic feminine if you do not balance it with the right amount of masculine so feminine without the balance of masculine looks like smothering sentimental needy dependent exploited unfocused irrational weak and manipulative right and so we must remember that for us to be healthy leaders we have to be able to express healthy feminine but also not forget the healthy masculine which is something we are all trained in because that has been well trained into us as leaders right clarity assertiveness focus direction order discipline structure discernment strength and convergence getting the job done right so right here in this very simple way you can get to see that what we have to learn to do as leaders is live above the line okay and it's like an inhale and exhale between your masculine and your feminine nature they are polarities and you need to work with both 
You need to be able to have the right balance of healthy feminine and healthy masculine. And if you do not do the balance, you are doomed to fall below the line into the toxic lower quadrants. And then you end up expressing the worst of both. You end up expressing unhealthy feminine and unhealthy masculine, right? So the way out of this, and this is the brilliance of Barry Johnson's uh, polarity mapping, is that identify what are your early warnings when you're falling below the line, and then identify the action step to go across to the healthy opposite quadrant, okay? And then you return back above the line. So to give you an example, if you know, you're feeling, in my case, when I fall below the line, I become too feminine and I forget to be masculine. I fall below the line and I become very needy. I become very uh, vulnerable and, uh, you know, I, I start looking for validation from, from someone else, right? So now that I know this is my early warning sign, when I start feeling needy, when I start feeling dependent, I have to catch myself and I've got to move across from the lower feminine quadrant into the upper healthy masculine quadrant and exercise one action step that will bring me to healthy masculine energy. So what is your healthy masculine energy? In my case, the antidote to being needy and dependent is what I call self-care. So I'm able to then step into taking care of my needs myself. I get myself a massage. I set the alarm to wake myself up, not wait for someone else to do that. So basically, I do not depend on anyone else. I, I exercise my agency to do the self-care, right? And that's a very masculine quality, right? So the minute I bring masculine energy back into my space, I'm back in the healthy place above the line in the above two quadrants. So the same way, ask yourself, if you've been doing too masculine energy, and you forgot the balance of the feminine, how do you fall below the line? What is your typical early warning sign that you're becoming hypermasculine? In my case, I become judgmental. I start looking down on people. I start feeling superior, right? So now I have said, ah, Nilima, early warning. You're becoming judgmental. You're falling below the line. You have to now move across the board to the healthy feminine to return to balance. And for me, healthy feminine action step would be exercising compassion, right? Compassion is a quality I'm good at. I know I can exercise, I have it in me, right? And I simply have to act on it. So, and it's the perfect antidote to judgment. So instead of judging someone, I can feel compassionate towards them. So as long as I'm moving between compassion and self-care, compassion for others and care for self, I'm in a very healthy place of balance and my Shakti is in full flow and is released, right? My true power is showing up in a very creative way to do whatever needs to be done in that moment. So I hope that answers your question and uh, I'm going to stop share. Yes, uh, thank you. And actually, it was interesting to see that in order for me to perhaps uh, um, like manage unhealthy feminine or masculine, the, the answer is not going to, to the, the same masculine or feminine. It will be like going in the, in the opposite energy, in the other uh, type of energy, looking yeah. for an answer. Uh, so uh, thank you for explaining to us. Uh, I think it was very, very clear. And everyone can perhaps start identifying the early, early warning signs and see what they find in the other side, on the other side, that can be brought to uh, help them manage this situation and be able to release uh, full Shakti. Yes, perfect, you understood it so well. Thank you. Uh, so my next question is because I've been uh, hearing this expression, right? Uh, you uh, mentioned it in your blog, in your webpage. Uh, also, Rashi Soli, as you mentioned, uh, who uh, made it possible for us to contact you. Uh, he often talks about being the wise fool of tough love, right? So we have talked about feminine and masculine, but can you explain to us, uh, because I, I believe uh, masculine and feminine energies are related to the, to the idea of tough love, 
But yes. what about being the wise fool? Can you explain to us also uh, what these energies mean for us as uh, individuals and also for exerting leadership? Yes. So in Shakti leadership, we say that um, in, in, in order to come into your full power, you need to be a whole person. And what does it mean to be whole? We say you have to be psychologically whole. And according to uh, psychology, we have four archetypes inside us. It's called the fourfold self, okay, at a very core level. So from the Eric Byrne model of transaction analysis, it says our, our ego self, when we are developed, we have a parent self and we have a child self. And to be an aware adult, we need to stand in our adult and access the healthy parent in a situation when needed, which is access to the wise self. And at the same time, some situations require that you go into your child and you access your curiosity and your sense of wonder and your, your willingness to make mistakes and you know, to fail and be able to laugh at yourself and get up and dust yourself and walk, walk on again and have that innocence of the child. So the wise fool is yet another psychological polarity we have in ourselves, the parent self and the child self. The tough love is what Carl Jung talks about when he says we have to achieve the inner wedding between our inner man and our inner woman, the masculine and the feminine side, right? So to be psychologically whole, you have to integrate four poles, the wise parent self, the foolish child self, the tough masculine self, and the love feminine self, right? And so a very simple way to remember it is you have to become the wise fool of tough love. And what is important about this statement is it's like a, it's like a tool for you in any leadership moment. If you find yourself stuck for some reason, ask yourself, what energy do I need to be dialing up or dialing down, right? Do I need to be more wise or more foolish? Do I need to be more tough or do I need to be more love? Because finally, it's about bringing that to balance. Yes, and uh, thank you for explaining uh, to us that also, because I think it's important, right? I can relate to that. Um, as I started teaching, I envisioned the role of a professor um, as being something very, uh, let's say, I don't know, formal, right? Um, so I had entered in this, in this type of character, right? That was really too formal. Uh, but later on, I realized that I could also allow myself to, to, to have fun, right? With my students and teach. And I think that balancing formality and also allowing humor to enter the classroom, for example, for me, help me be more natural and even got better results at uh, my uh, teaching evaluations. You know, the fool energy, the child energy is going to redeem us because look at the world, it's at war right now. It's because there is too much adult energy. There's too much, you know, uh, grown up energy. You know, if, if all of us remember to lighten up and play, we will not be going to war and killing each other. You know, so uh, sometimes the wise and the tough and the love cannot do what the fool can do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's uh, an amazing, I think, um, like message to, to, to uh, recover, right? Because I think, it, as you said, uh, the world is going through many things right now. So perhaps we need to, to, to reach out to our, our, our child Ourselves. So thank you uh, for addressing this, this question, Nilima. Uh, I would like to also maybe uh, discuss a little bit of something you mentioned at the start. You mentioned uh, the need for congruency and purpose, right? Yes. So we envision purpose in, in conscious business, conscious enterprise as uh, perhaps this sparkle that allows you to act with something higher in mind, right, then with, with impact in mind. So can you perhaps describe how Shakti leadership can also help us like discover and allow us to search for more impact, positive impacts in society and uh, in the environment. So 
Uh, can you explain to us how could we perhaps reach out to this uh, perspective of leadership and try to develop us uh, in releasing our Shakti uh, to the better, uh, to the well -being, for the well-being of, of, of everyone? One of the things uh, Shakti leadership talks about, and this draws from the Indic tradition, like what is the purpose of life? The purpose of life is to follow your bliss. You know, what brings you joy? And if you can't follow your bliss, then as Andrew Harvey says, follow your heartbreak. You know, what is it in the world that breaks your heart? You know, go out there and fix it, heal it, find a solution for it. So, um, in the Indic tradition, we say that, uh, the, you know, there are four main pursuits of life that give life meaning and give life purpose. Artha, Kama, Dharma, Moksha. So Artha is meaningful work, right? Beyond just profit. Um, Kama is loving relationships. Dharma is finding a way to living your true life finding the truth of who you are and expressing that through your work and your relationships. Like the leader, the leader you are is the person you are, right? Finding your dharma, walking your dharma. And then moksha is breaking through to freedom from ego and bondage and getting out of this small little rat race, you know, that there is more to life. There is freedom and fulfillment to be, to be searched for. And in the pursuit of these four things, artha, kama, dharma, moksha, you realize you cannot get to it with your ego. You have to transcend your personal agenda in order to truly meet these four pursuits, right? So you realize that there is a higher purpose to life there that none of us are okay until all of us are okay that we are here to complete the world in some way and the world is incomplete until you have expressed the unique uh, seed that you contain of potential right so um congruence is this very beautiful journey of becoming the person you were meant to be and living out your full potential, uh, which is unique to who you are. And in the living out of that, you make the world better and you heal the world and you complete the world. Um, so essentially, you're not here only for yourself. You know, you're here to be a piece of a grander puzzle. So that and to find your unique place in that yeah. big puzzle is the purpose of life. Thank you. I think there's a lot of wisdom in this very brief uh, answer that you gave us. Uh, and I will perhaps highlight the idea of each person in the world being unique, right? And going through these different areas that you mentioned, how it help us find what makes us unique and be able to find our place uh, to complete the world, as, as you said. Um, and you, you have spoken to us about um, like how it helped us relate to perhaps um, a higher purpose and maybe finding solutions to uh, prevalent problems. Um, one thing that also worries us today is the environment, nature, right? And yeah. the way we relate to nature perhaps is, it has been done with... Uh, maybe the extreme and unhealthy energies that you mentioned at the beginning of our talk. Um, can you tell us what about our relationship to nature and how Shakti uh, leadership can perhaps make us build a better relationship with nature? In Shakti leadership, when we talk about wholeness, we mention psychological wholeness, but there are two other uh, kinds of wholeness as well. Okay, there are three views of wholeness drawing from the Indic tradition and the Chinese tradition and the Western. So according to the Indic tradition, um, we are made up of two selves, the human and the divine. And to become whole, yoga is to integrate your ordinary self with your higher self, your human self with your divine self. That is the meaning of yoga. But in the Chinese tradition, they talk about ecological wholeness which is that for 
you as a human being to be in perfect health. You have to be in a beautiful symbiotic equilibrium with the nature all around you. That you are not separate from nature. You are in a yin yang equilibrium, a dance of balance uh, with nature. So in Chinese medicine, the Chinese doctor will diagnose your sickness when you fall sick by saying, how have you lost your balance with nature? How have you disconnected from nature? How, and, and to heal, how can you go back and reconnect with nature in a way that your energy flows in a mutuality? The health of the nature around you is a mirror of the health inside you, right? So to be ecologically whole requires that we understand our natural place in the ecosystem, that we are not outside of the ecosystem. We are part of the ecosystem. We are embedded in the ecosystem. So, you know, when we say we are dealing with our garbage and, you know, go throw it away, there is no such thing as a way. <laughs> there is no a way because this is one finite planet, right? Whatever we throw outside is going to recycle and come back to us. You know, it's like throwing something into the ocean, the ocean brings it right back to the shore, right? So there is, there is this profound understanding in uh, the approach to wholeness that you cannot be whole without being in integral balance and reciprocity with all of nature. Thank you, Nilima. Uh, I think that, um, yeah, understanding our interdependence with, uh, yeah, not only humans, because we, we touch on that, uh, but also with the natural environment that surrounds us is very much important. Um, let me go back also, we discuss a little bit about how we can uh, perhaps uh, discover purpose and uh, enhance this pursuit of purpose to um, have positive impacts. But there are problems, uh, in particular, for example, in Mexico, we are, um, every, every time that we turn on the news, we see that there's a lot of violence against women. So I, I wonder if by perhaps educating ourselves on what Shakti leadership means and perhaps spreading the, this, this uh, leadership perspective uh, uh, more uh, broadly in, in our country could help us maybe address this problem. So uh, do you have any ideas of how this approach of Shakti leadership can um, help us solve these kind of issues, right? Like specifically uh, a violent environment towards women. Yeah. Well, that just breaks my heart, you know, violence against women is true of so many macho cultures, right? And uh, in Shakti leadership, we do not make the men wrong or bad. We, we say the men are as wounded and traumatized as the women are because they have lost their wholeness. When you do not develop your feminine side, when you suppress it and you repress it, you become toxic masculine. And that hurts you as much as it hurts others, right? Because you've lost part of yourself in the process, right? And so you're going through a wound. You're going through a trauma because of the loss of self in some way, right? And um, the really, the only, the only solution is for all men, women, children, regardless of gender, to be able to access this lost feminine and be able to express these capacities of empathy and care and kindness and compassion and inclusion and intuition and reciprocity and vulnerability. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science. Whatever you try and you train at, you become good at whatever you measure and reward in a society or in a company or at home gets done. So we have to basically raise up and value and reward and train and practice feminine values and behaviors across all gender. And when we do that, the men themselves who are traumatized because of the undeveloped feminine, uh, they have become 
aggressive and cruel and, you know, they themselves are hurting because of the loss of the feminine is the soul inside us. The masculine is the spirit, you know, so to speak. So anima and animus. So if you're, if you're out of touch with your soul, it can be a very, very deeply empty and painful and existentially um, challenging uh, life. You know, so we say hurt people hurt people. And uh, you, you will not abuse someone or be violent against someone without first having been violent towards yourself in some way. And that violence towards self happens because of having cut away the feminine. So the only answer is to recover the feminine self. Yes. So if I, I, I understood it correctly, by um, in reaching out to your audience, right? By creating conditions, right? And providing uh, support for everyone uh, around us in the workplace, um, also in our homes, um, allowing like people, not only men, but also women to, to balance and to, to, as you said, practice and train and to allow themselves to express different energies. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that could be perhaps a, a little step towards a better environment and uh, re reducing violence. Uh, so thank you for addressing that point, uh, Nilima. So finally, I know that we experienced technical difficulties. So um, uh, I would like to, um, to just perhaps uh, wrap up this, uh, this fireside uh, chat by asking you, how can we develop our Shakti uh, and apply that to leadership? And if you have any ideas or any suggestions of perhaps assessments that we can take and uh, tips for us to um, develop this, 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 uh, all this dimension and reach a, a more whole kind of uh, leadership style. Absolutely. So let me screen share. I've made lots of stuff available for free on my um, website. So can you see my web website? When you go yes. to the blog section, there is, so this is shaktileadership.com. When you go to the blog, there is free resources. And when you click on that, you know, go to the presence practice. Presence practice, presence, cultivating presence is the master key. And it's like a meditation. It takes just 10 to 12 minutes a day. Just do it again and again. And you will start cultivating a state of presence, a state of equanimity, a place from which you can access your healthy feminine and healthy masculine nature. Okay. So presence is a quality you must learn to cultivate. And after you do that, you can take this free assessment. It's called the Shakti Leadership Styles Assessment and Ready Reckoner. And uh, this is a page you can read and understand how to use it. But if you click here, it opens to a, a Excel sheet. Okay, so let me show you what that Excel sheet looks like. It's a very simple Ready Reckoner. So there are five ways in which we uh, do leadership. It's structure, how you structure your team and work. There's a masculine way of doing it. There's a feminine way of doing it. Or orientation, what do you focus on to get the job done? There's a masculine way and a feminine way. Neither is right or wrong, okay? Each one of us has a archetype. Some of us are more feminine in our leadership. Some of us are more masculine in our leadership. So influence, how do you get others to do what is important for you? Motivation, what energizes or drives you when you're working with others? Conflict, how you resolve disagreements and disputes, right? There's a masculine way and there is a feminine way, okay? So for example, in masculine, you may confront directly or you approach it indirectly, you know, uh, where you're seeking closure and moving on, whereas the feminine will be seeking healing, right? Uh, so one is very transactional and the other one is emotional. Neither is right or wrong. Both are appropriate for different situations, okay? So what we ask you to do when you take this assessment, you can put a tick mark in never, rarely, sometimes, often, never, rarely, sometimes, often, right? 
And when you start assessing yourself and your behaviors, at the end of it, you will receive a score. And the score will say your overall leadership style is either balanced or you are masculine as a leader or you are feminine as a leader. And within each of these domains, your structure approach is either masculine or feminine. Your orientation focus is either masculine or feminine. Your influence style is either masculine or feminine. Your motivation type is either masculine or feminine. Your conflict management is either masculine or feminine. Now, here is the ready reckoner. Okay, one is to know what is your natural style. So play to your strength. If that's who you are, good for you, play that. But if that is not working, okay, if you are stuck for some reason, then we say to you, we, we, we say, think about a situation, for example, in conflict. If your style is more masculine, you know, because you're confronting directly or whatever, then, hey, try the opposite behavior. And right here, we have even given you the very specific behaviors. Go ahead and approach the problem indirectly. You know, feelings and facts give both of them importance. Instead of being very uh, closure oriented, you know, how about seeking some healing? Instead of being transactional, is it okay to be emotional? Go ahead and express emotions. Go through the hurt and the pain. Maybe that's the only way you're going to be able to move through this, right? So vice versa, if you're going through a conflict situation and you're a feminine leader, <laughs> you've got to now try some of the opposite. Hey, how about confronting directly? And just focus on the facts, you know, don't get into the feelings. Go ahead and seek closure. Be transactional, don't take it personally, right? So this assessment is also a, it's a diagnostic and it's a solution. Yes, uh, thank you. And probably it will not necessarily be easy to perhaps uh, change behaviors that have been, we, we have gotten used to them. But I think as uh, you have proposed us, at least becoming aware of where we are, right? Yeah. Help us uh, understand that and willing to be willing to, uh, by be willing to, to change our behaviors, then we are progressing and developing this. And, you know, we have to, Anything you practice, you become good at. Mm -hmm. So just because we have a habit of being one archetype, masculine or feminine, doesn't mean we cannot be the other. Because psychologically, we carry both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's simply that we have preferred one and neglected the other. Mm -hmm. But if that style doesn't work anymore, then we have no choice but to balance with the other style. Yes, thank you. Yes, so uh, if, if I can summarize uh, your uh, suggestions for the developing our Shakti is uh, like practicing presence and taking this assessment uh, slash also uh, solutions uh, on the sides of the, of the behaviors, right? Absolutely. If you can do those two things, you'll find yourself in your Shakti flow. So uh, thank you for very specific suggestions of how we can develop Shakti leadership and for all the answers that you have um, given us about Shakti leadership and what it means for us. Uh, so again, thank you. Thanks for developing this very much important topic. I think it, it can have great impact um, in the way that we are behaving and obviously the then impacting the world for the better. Um, and thanks again for your generosity by sharing this uh, knowledge with us. And I hope that the audience uh, also feels like I, I, I do today, uh, living with um, an energy to try to also find my wholeness and continue developing uh, myself in these areas that you have mentioned to us. So thank you very much, uh, Nilima, and hope to see you again and talk to you again very soon. Yeah, I look forward to sharing the whole Shakti leadership model and the five elements. Today, we just skimmed the surface, but I gave you the most important things. There is a proper model with five elements, presence, power, wholeness, flexibility, congruence, and the heroic journey and the hero and the heroine's journey. So there is there is a lot more wonderful, rich material, and I look forward to sharing that with you, uh, maybe in Mexico sometime. Yes, definitely. Uh, I will write that down and uh, definitely see you in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.